Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our geometry skills. Today is our lesson number eight, day number eight. Today we'll talk about parallel lines. Yep, just as I thought. For well, those of you who have been watching my videos for quite some time now, you know by now that I have the gift for misspelling words. If you're looking for a guy to spell something correctly, don't bother contacting me. Contacting me. But if you're looking for somebody to misspell something, I'm your guy. As soon as I put two R's, I had this nagging feeling that something has gone drastically wrong. Parallel lines. P A R A L L E. Parallel, parallel lines. So here are here are two parallel lines, and then it's being intersected by a third line like this, and then another line like this. And we are given angles. Angle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine, ten. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And this we're being asked which of the following pairs are equal. Which of the following pairs are equal? And there are three pairs that they're going to give you, which I'm not going to write down there because it's too low. But before I go into this thing, let's first talk about what, what, what we need to learn today. When two, when two parallel lines, and don't ask me why I had the urge to spell parallel with a capital P. When two parallel lines are intersected, By a, let me change the marker, this is getting too light. Third line. This is even worse. When two parallel lines are being intersected by, third, by a third line, three things happen. Three things happen. This is the third black marker that I picked up. I don't know why, all of a sudden they are all dying. Three things happen. Number one. We get two kinds of angles. Small ones and large ones. Number two. Any two angles. Let me explain that what I mean by that. I'm going to actually raise this thing. I'm going to redraw it when the time comes. Let's first understand what I just did. When two parallel lines are intersected by a third line, three things happen. We get two kinds of angles, small ones and large ones. Watch this. A small one, a large one. 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 
a small one or a large one. You see? Three things happen. We get two kinds of angles, small ones and large ones. Number two, any two angles that look equal are in fact equal. So if you have a parallel line, two parallel line, and if you have a third line here, if this angle to you looks like the same size as that angle, if they look equal, they are in fact equal. If this if this angle to you seems like the same as this one, if it seems like it, then they are equal. Any two angles that look equal are in fact equal. Number three. The sum, S U M sum, of any small angle and any large angle, the sum of any small angle and any large angle equals 180. In other words, if you were to give them numbers here, let's give them numbers here, so we can talk about them. Let's call it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here I'm going counterclockwise, here I'm going clockwise, I don't know what the hell is going on. But in this example, the sum of any small angle and any large angle is 180. For example, 1 is a small angle and 5 is a large angle, so that's 180. Sum of any small angle and any large angle is 180. 7 is a large one, 7 is a large one, 3 is a small one, so that's 180. 8 is a small one, 2 is a large one, so that's 180. See, 8, which is a small angle right here, number 8, and 2 is a large one right here, number 2 is 180. The sum of any small angle and any large angle is 180. And that's what we have to keep in mind. You don't have to memorize any of the fancy terminologies that you're taught in a school because that gets very annoying, very tedious. I don't know myself what the hell they are. They, they have their names and they call them complementary angle and this angle and that angle. And they have names for small angles and large angles, acute angles and obtuse. What the? I don't want to deal with that. Just keep it very simple. When two parallel lines are being intersected by a third line, three things are going to happen. Number one, we're going to get two kinds of angles, small ones and large ones. Number two, if two angles look equal, they are equal. Number three, the sum of any small angle, any small angle and any large angle is going to be 180. That's all there is. That's all. Say two. So, let's do the problem that we have at that, that, that we were supposed to do, which is right here. This was given. 1, 2, 3. This is angle 1, 2, and 3. This is angle 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. The question simply is, which of the following pairs are equal and for that I need for that I need the room so I need to erase everything but before I erase everything I'm going to read it one more time parallel lines when two parallel lines are intersected by a third line three things happen number one we get two kinds of angles small ones and large ones number two any two angles that look equal are in fact equal number three the sum of any small angle and any large angle is 180 that's all. As you can see, there is no terminology in here, there is no mumbo jumbo, there is no jargon. Very simple, very straightforward. If there is any terminology or any jargon that you would need to know, I will let you know. So in this in these videos, we keep everything strictly on a need-to-know basis. If you do not need to know it, I won't worry about it. And you don't have to learn it. Need to know for what? I'm talking about the SAT or the GRE or the GMAT. If you're preparing for any of these exams, 
Nobody's going to ask you the terminology. So you just need to understand the concept. That's all. So if you don't need to know it, I won't tell you. I won't tell you because just in the event that if you're captured by the enemy, I don't want you to spill all the beans. So strictly on a need to know basis. Here's the question. Don't ask me what that means, what I just said. I have no idea. Sometimes I just babble. Do you understand? Which of the following? Which of the following pairs are equal? Number one, two, three. One and nine, two and seven, ten and twelve. So let's take a look. One and nine, where are they? Got two colors ready. One. One to me looks like a small angle here. So here you're dealing with, you see, for, for one and nine, here's your nine. For this, we're dealing with this line right here. So ignore the other line. Just ignore the other line, pretend it doesn't exist. So what we're dealing with is something like this. Like this. And 9 is your small angle right there. 9. And 1 is your other small angle, which is right here. That looks like a small angle to me, and that looks like a small angle. Because a large angle would have been the outside one. This, this is the large angle. L for large. 1 is a small angle, 9 is a small angle. And we just talked about it. All the small angles are equal to each other. If any two angles look equal, they are in fact equal. And one looks to me like is it equal to nine. So one and nine are in fact equal. Let's look at two and seven. Ah, two and seven has to do with this line here, the blue line. So I want you to ignore the red line. I want you to ignore the red line and just look at this part. Or is two? Two is right here. This is your two. That's your two right there. And seven is right here. Again, they look like two small angles to me. Two and seven. They are equal to each other. Because they are two small angles. Finally, ten and twelve. Where are ten and twelve? Oh, ten and twelve is actually very simple. Ten and twelve, they are both large angles. This looks like a large angle to me. This looks like a large angle to me. They are both equal. And of course, they are also both equal, which has nothing to do with parallel line. They are also both equal because that has to do with the concept of what is known as, so they are equal. 10 and 12 has to do with the concept of what is known as vertical angles. What are vertical angles? Vertical angles are sometimes, some people call it opposite angles, but I want you to understand and know the terminology vertical angles because that's what they use in the exam. Vertical angles are, for example here, if I have a line like this and a line like that, these two angles are called vertical angles. 1 equals 2. And 3 is going to equal 4. 3 and 4 are vertical angles. 3 and 4. And so are 1 and 2. They are opposite angles. If, if you have a line, this angle is opposite of that angle, they are equal. This angle is opposite of that angle, they are equal. So 3 and 4 are equal to each other, and 1 and 2 are equal to each other. Well, and 10 and 12 looks like to me they are vertical angles. This angle is opposite of this angle, they are vertical angles. So the question was, which of the following pairs are equal to each other? The answer is all three of them. All three of them are equal to each other. So the correct answer is 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3. That's it. We are done for today, for the parallel lines. As I explained to you before, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating one more time at the risk of being repetitive, I'm going to explain it one more time, that what I'm doing here in the first few days, today is only our day number 8, I'm going to probably do two more days, 9 and 10. And what I've done in the first 10 days is to explain some very basic elementary concept of geometry in a great deal of details. So that after day number 10, uh, when I start solving the geometry problems from the SAT and the GRE and the GMAT, we can just solve the problems and if you need to refer to some basic concept, I can simply tell you, go and watch this particular video if you are having trouble with certain concept. 
but I'm not going to keep explaining the same concept in this much detail, obviously, every time when we're doing the problem. This is a one-time deal. Do you understand? So, today, our day number, today was our day number eight. Let's see what do I have for tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to talk about something called distance formula. Something that I have found many a times kids have trouble with because they're sitting there and trying to memorize the distance formula and which is why they have trouble because they try to memorize it. They think it's something special, something, some freak thing that falls from the sky. What, what, I'm, what we're going to learn tomorrow is the concept behind distance formula. And you will see that it's very, very simple and it turns out that there is actually no formula to be, remember, to, to be memorized. You don't have to memorize any formula. You just have to understand the concept behind it and you will see that it's quite straightforward and simple. But that's for tomorrow. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either face-to-face -face or over the internet via Skype for GRE, GMAT, SAT, or TOEFL, or for geometry, algebra, calculus, statistics, any of the reasons that, you, that I mentioned, just go to any of these website addresses that you see and send me an email. Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email telling me what you need help with. All right, and I'll do whatever whatever it is that I can to help you in your preparation. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.